Today we're going to show you how to do an oil change on your Sea Doo tricks. What you're going to do is take off your two back footrests with a T30 bit. After removing all four of your screws on both sides of the foot pedals, your longest screw, remember, you're going to have three short screws that are going to go here, here, and here, and you're going to have one, your longest screw is going to go on your outside of your foot pedals. You're going to want to remove both your foot pedals, as well, you're going to want to remove the cappings for these. Slide them both out. This will be an optional step if you have the front storage bin on your on your Sea-Doo Tricks or not. First, you're going to want to unlatch both of the rubber sides, and then you're going to have five screws inside. One, two, three, four, five, which you want to break, then you're going to be able to take out your dry space, or your wet space, sorry. Next thing you're going to want to do before taking off all the screws in the black body hull to separate the uh, the plastic top from the bottom hull, you're going to want to take off your seat, which has a little rear clip on the back. You're going to want to pull that off. It does take a little bit of force to get this guy off. Put the seat off to the side. Next, what you're going to want to do is take out three screws that pertain to the gas cap over here. One, two, three, which is the same T30 bit as the whole body hull. And then we'll move on to the steering column. two body panels on both sides which you're going to have to take off in order to get to the screws that hold in your steering column so you're going to want to do this there's a little black clip here you pull from the bottom and then you're going to have two clips that guide it on the top take that off put that to the side and then you have one more clip which you have a dry space in which has a safety on this side you pull from the bottom clips again on the top you're going to want to remove this as this gives you space to get to your steering column bolts on both sides and also your steering linkage which we're going to take off momentarily on the top now we're going to take off the steering linkage bolt and the steering uh, steering column bolt that pertain to the hull of the jet ski. Quick tip, put your steering uh, steering handlebars to the left-hand side to bring the bolt in closer to you so it's a little bit easier to work with and you have a little bit more clearance. I'm using a 10 millimeter socket and I'm using a 10 millimeter wrench because that's all I have. If you have two 10 millimeter wrenches, it makes it a little bit easier, but I still have space for this. Put the wrench, put the, put the wrench on the top, socket on the bottom as well. undo it a little bit it might take two or three turns but then it gets pretty loose and then once you have that you can just put your wrench on the top hold the wrench on hold your bolt with your bottom finger and then you should be able to just take it out like that have that guy loose you're gonna to want to take off these two bolts here you're not gonna to want to have too far an extension because you're not working with too much space here so you're gonna to want to have this bolt break this off okay. and your final screw is gonna be down here this one you can use an extension for get the socket in between it's gonna be very, very tight, the area that you're working with, so make sure you are aware of that. Once you have that done, you're gonna to wanna to move on to your, your body panel over here that's connected. This is gonna open your box up to your uh, battery port. You're gonna to wanna to twist it downwards. Don't worry, it's gonna take a little bit of force. It's a waterproof, waterproof area. So it has clips on all the top. You're gonna to slide it out. Clip, 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 slide. You just have this as your locking mechanism. That's fine. Put this off to your side. And then what you're gonna wanna do, you're gonna have a little bit of a tough time if you don't have a flathead screwdriver. You're gonna wanna do this. Your first clip, I'm just gonna do this one, the small one first. You're gonna wanna slide this red little thing back, locks in, right? Don't just start try and pull. You're gonna wanna take your flathead screwdriver. There's a black little tab here. Push this black little tab up and then slides out like butter. Same thing here. You take this, push it down, take your black screwdriver. There's this little tab. If you can look inside here, if you can see on the video, you have this black little tab. You wanna press this black little tab up and unhooks and then slides out like butter. So in our case, our, our whole middle jet ski hole is all black, but what you're gonna to wanna to do is this. 
So follow along. You're gonna take off all the screws that pertain to this black little uh, plastic piece in the middle that uh, seats your seating area and covers over your engine. So we're gonna break off all these. Still T30 bit. You're gonna to wanna to have a 10 millimeter socket because once you get to these middle ports or parts over here, you're gonna to wanna to look underneath. There's a, there's a bolt that's holding it underneath and it's squishing in and that's what holds the body together. Make sure when you take off each of these long screws, they're gonna have the long screw, black washer as normal. You're gonna have an extra washer which goes on the bottom and your gold locking screw that's, that ultimately sandwiches everything in. Then, so just so we can speed up the video a little bit, you're gonna wanna take off this one right here, this one right here, this one next as well. This one's are gonna have bottom screws as well. You wanna take off this one already came off with the back step, so you don't have to take that one off. You're gonna wanna take off this black screw right here, this black screw here, this one here, this one here. This one came off again with the long step, or the, the step which was your longest bolt again. You're gonna wanna take off all these four screws right here that come on the hole on the bottom side. You're gonna have one last one here that connects here. Take off this black screw right here as your last, as your last one before the, uh, the top of the steering column. And you wanna take off your one last one opposite side of the one over here that we took off. That's gonna be uh, where the old uh, dr uh, dryer wet box was before, but you're gonna to wanna to take it off as that doesn't pertain to the whole steering column. After taking out all of your bolts to disconnect the top hull with the bottom hull, you're gonna to wanna, to, uh, if you can do this one person, having two makes it a little bit easier, but you're just gonna pull the hull straight up. You might have a little bit of uh, maneuvering you gotta do because the gas cap is here and also your steering column's in the middle. So you gotta make sure you, uh, you, take, you take note of that. We disconnected that though before. So you're gonna to wanna to just have a, have a handle on both. Your gas cap's gonna try and lock it in. You take it up, your steering column over, and your hull is completely off. After removing your top hull and gaining access to the inside of the engine, you're gonna to wanna to do this. You're gonna to wanna to get an oil extractor machine because on these engines, it's, it's very hard to get to a drain plug uh, at the bottom of the engine in order to extract the oil. So you have an oil extractor, you put the tube down the oil, uh, oil plug tube that you use to check your oil levels, and you extract the oil from there. This will extract roughly about two US quarts, which is just shy of two liters uh, Canadian, and that's what will be coming in your XPS change kit. Now moving to the opposite side of the engine, while we still have the oil extractor machine is extracting our oil from the bottom, which we're at about one and a half liters right now, we're gonna take off the oil filter cap to, to replace the oil filter. So you're gonna wanna use a, uh, I got a quarter inch and it's it's the Torx socket because this is a multi-point. You don't wanna use just a regular socket because you might actually strip that bolt just in case. So you're gonna wanna take out, there's three bolts right there. So after removing the cap and the oil filter from your engine, you're gonna have your oil filter like this, which is connected to your uh, connected to your oil filter cap. So what you're gonna wanna do is just break that off. It just clips in. And then you're gonna wanna make sure there's an O-ring right here. Ours came with a black one. This year we got a different color one, which is red, which is nice. And we know that we, we did change it for next year, year over year. You take off the oil filter ring. You put on the new oil filter ring here. And then make sure as well, when you have this new filter ring, you're just going to want to take a little bit of oil with this guy because the problem is if you put that oil filter cap on and it's not lubricated, you're going to run into a little bit of problems. You know, it might, uh, might deteriorate a little bit. Just want to take a little bit of the, little bit of the new oil and just run it along the, run it along the O-ring. Just get it nice and lubed up a little bit. Put this oil filter ring on. Siphon it around the cap, seat it properly. Wipe off a little bit of excess if you have in here, if you wanna just clean it off a little bit. Your next cap, make sure flat side top, this oil filter will click in. So make sure you put enough pressure, click that bad boy in. Now you got your new filter in. You're gonna wanna take a little bit of new oil come to the side of the jet ski where you do have your oil filter because we sucked out a little bit of the oil there we saw a little bit of old oil we used the extractor we sucked out a little bit of the, uh, more of the old oil uh, from there you just want to prime that area a little bit throw a little bit of oil inside there a smidge 
and then put a little bit in there. Take your filter, popped in, O-ring good. And you're just gonna slide your filter on in. Put the cap on and then secure it with your three bolts. After completing your install of your oil filter back into your cap and replacing it, torquing down all three screws, just nice and tight, the way that they came off, really, you wanna put it back on. You don't have to torque them down. It's just, it'll keep enough pressure on. You're gonna to wanna to put back with your XPS kit, you're gonna get two bottles of these guys and you're gonna to wanna to put, to to put back, both back into there. It's 5W40, the one that we got. If you use a funnel, it'll be a lot easier on yourself. After filling up your oil with the two US quarts of oil, you're gonna put back in your dipstick, which just locks in. You're gonna to wanna to check your oil, just make sure you're full, which we are, we're at max. You're gonna to wanna to clip in your dipstick, which just turns, clicks in, nothing else. Now we're gonna retrace our steps, put back on our whole seating hull, and then we're gonna just put back all the screws in and then make sure everything is all pressed in and fitted.